Here at Dulwich Picture Gallery, we pride ourselves in doing shows on artists that are not so well known today. It's a series called Rediscovering the Old Masters, and this year we've dedicated it to Pierre Paul Prudent, a French 18th century artist who worked right into the beginning of the 19th century. Prudent is known for his large compositions, which are all now at the Louvre Museum, but he was also a fantastic draftsman. And what we've done is borrow a selection of 12 drawings from a tiny museum called the Musée Baron Martin in Gré, just north of Dijon, and brought them here so that they can be seen by a wider public. Prudent particularly liked doing life drawing. And unlike his contemporaries, who tended to draw in a rather cold, neoclassical style, Prudent was able to instill a sense of light that falls onto the figure and came up with these drawings that are almost moonlit uh, because of their soft contour. And his contemporaries considered him as the French Correggio. Prudent's talent was recognised at a very young age when a local bishop sent him to study drawing at Dijon. In the 1780s, he won a competition to travel to Rome, where he studied from classical sculpture and the great works of such Renaissance artists as Michelangelo and Leonardo. And it's very interesting that here in Rome, he actually refused to mix with um, his contemporary artist, and he didn't even join a painting studio, for, as he feared that his personal style would be repressed. In 1805, Prudhon shot to fame when his work was spotted by the Empress Josephine, the first wife of Napoleon Bonaparte. Here in our display at Dulwich, we have some preparatory works that record Josephine's sitting for Prudhon. Josephine herself described this portrait as more the work of a friend than a painter. And what's very fascinating about these works is that there is a certain rapport between artist and sister that comes across, particularly in the melancholy gaze of Josephine. Prudhon drew right till the end, 1823, when he dies. And this is one of the most beautiful academies that we have here. I and mean, it's almost balletic, the way the hand is, is held out like that. Of course, this is done in the studio. He must have had a rope to make mm -hmm. sure that the hand didn't collapse. It must have been exhausting. It must have taken hours to create hours. this highly finished drawing. But where did he go? Where did he go and do his drawings? Well, interestingly, it's more common for students to create drawings like this as a way of practicing. But as you say, Prudhon enjoyed drawing throughout his career. And actually one of his students set up a, a sort of informal drawing academy actually in a disused chapel in the Sorbonne, mm. which is quite interesting when you look at the light in these drawings. You can imagine it coming through the light of the church. I mean, that's the thing that makes his drawing so different to a lot of his contemporaries, is this lighting effect, the way that he uses white Absolutely. chalk to get the, the wonderful sort of silvery light that falls on the musculature mm -hmm. of the figure. And then he, he slightly idealises this very handsome young man with sort of uh, revolutionary hair hanging That's down. That's it. There's a kind of a compelling contradiction, isn't there, between in some ways these sort of artificial poses and the sense of a real person caught at a real moment. It's quite a compelling contrast. This is really different in terms of just the subject matter. It's, it's a drapery study uh, for a woman sitting and what I love about it is that it's all about the way the light falls on, on drapery and you see all the folds and the intricacies of, of drapery attached to a leg. I presume it's a study. Yes, funnily enough, Proudhon used it a number of years later. He actually adapted it for a painting. The painting was commissioned by Marie Louise of Austria, who ended up being Napoleon's second wife. And the final painting is entitled Andromache and Astyanax. It's a story from the Trojan Wars. And today it's actually to be found in the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Right. But as a drawing in itself, I mean, this is probably the one I would walk away with because it's, it's almost abstract. It's just a detail and yet it's, the focus is, is intense, the way that, that, that light falls. And it reminds me a lot of, of Leonardo's drawings. You know, he did Absolutely. these beautiful drapery yeah. studies. We know that he actually got, um, uh, he soaked drapery in clay and that let it harden so that the, the folds would be even sharper. But here, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's so different to those uh, academy figures. Um, and yet, I think it's so eloquently uh, made. There are very few drawings by Proudhon in this country. And in order to sort of complement all these wonderful drawings from, from Gray, uh, we've borrowed this from the British Museum. And it is a sensational drawing. It's on the typical sort of bluish-gray buff paper sheet. 
And the, the technique, I mean, he was a real technician, wasn't he? He really was. His technique is actually remarkably complex. He would start off with areas of light and shade and really blend the chalk to create these sort of swathes of velvety texture. But it's actually over these areas of light and dark that he would create this very, very careful hatching, these lines that follow the contour of the body. And it gives a certain animation to the figure, doesn't it? And it creates this very moonlit atmosphere, like we said before. Yeah, I mean, the, the way the shadows are created, how soft everything is, and, and also the way she's been almost disturbed as she's perhaps doing her toilet. She looks very like Josephine. It's that it's true, actually, yes, uh, the hairstyle. <laughs> but what, uh, what I find fascinating about these is that they, they look forward to, to the young Degas. Degas did some beautiful drawings mm -hmm. early in his career, that very classical and yet very modern. And this wonderful modernity that, you know, you feel that they are of their age, about 1810. Uh, and yet it's, um, it's one of the many academic studies that artists did as part of their training throughout their career. But he yeah. makes it very different. Yes, the fall of light and shade on these muscles here along their back, they're almost abstract. In his observation, it's remarkably modern.